people, welcome back to Politics Watch. This is Serpy. Now, in the world of 87s, there are killers and then there are killers. Some of them operate in such a manner that even their fellow 87s scratch their heads and wondering what the hell is going on with this youth. You would have heard about Delano Williams, aka Bigger Crime, from out of the Stone Crusher gang. A uh, young man who was so ruthless that his fellow 87s used to tip off people before they go on operation and tell them to listen leave because if we come and we see one, we'll spare one. but if crime turn up he might just kill everybody to leave that young man right there clearly had bigger issues than just your regular badness you also had people like a james Hines, the head removal specialist speaking about james Hines, in his video i mentioned that another apex 87 by the name of Nevada Hodges, who was one of the most powerful 87s in the system and had arguably the strongest team and the most infamous team in the Klansman system. He used to tell people all the time, as much as he's a killer, and everybody afraid of him, and people hear about Nevada Hodges, people hear about DJ and him know what will happen if him come for them, or if his team come for them. Hodges would tell people, that there were only two 87s who him look up to. I mentioned one of them in the James Hines video. Yes, James Hines was one of them. Nevada Hodges looked up to him and admired him as a killer. I don't need to tell you what type of person you have to be to make Nevada Hodges look up to you as a killer. The second 87 he looked up to was Kidan Johnson aka bad from now what makes bad from story interesting is not because somebody like hodges would look up to him as a killer it's actually because bad from had an interesting twist to his character you see there were lots of killers in clansman this is a gang where somebody who only go upon three killing ops used to get teased that he's not a top killer think about that Man go up and ops only three times and kill three people. And the other gang members would tell him say he's not a top killer. People laugh at that. <laughs> he only killed three people. And in that aesthetic world, you can understand why. When somebody like Scott Thomas have over 30 confirmed victims, where the police them know about, he confessed to more. When you have people like your Hodges, when you have people like your JJ Nakis, of course, quote unquote, only killing three people isn't going to earn you much respect. So this is not about who's a killer and who is this and who's that. Everybody know Klansman was full of killers. So why is Bad Fram interesting? Well let's go back to his upbringing. See Bad Fram is one of the imported killers them that went into Spanish town because originally he's from South St. Andrew. Just like how sci-fi is not originally from Spanish town, right? South St. Andrew again. James Hines, none of these youths, right, they never actually born and grow in a Spanish town. Sci-fi was from Maxfield Avenue. You'd have heard me say it before. Maxfield, over the years, produced so many 87s they can export them. Maxfield export 87s like how Jamaica used to export green banana. You, you can take 10, you take 5, you take 15 and just send them all about the place. And the one they will go to Spanish town, the one they will end up link up with clans, they bring a different style of badness. A style of badness that enough people over Spanish town were not even ready for. Because remember, Maxfield start bad before Spanish town. When Maxfield did hot like fire and people had dropped left, right, and center, Spanish town was still a place where enough people used to aspire to go live. Who remember those days when people used to leave Kingston, still my God, Spanish to and go look a better life? Those days are long gone now. So as a youth growing up in Maxfield, Kid and Johnson start bad from an early age. Get it? Kid and Johnson? Bad from? Yes. Bad from start boss gun for the Malico boy. Very young age. Right by the time he reached him early teenage years, he was already feared. See, Enough people start hear about Bad Fram from him clansman days when him that Spanish stone around the place red. But Bad Fram was already causing havoc in Maxfield Avenue. To the point where Bad Fram ended up suffered 
a huge tragedy in his personal life. What happened? See, Bartram did a lick head with all of the notorious 87s over the side there. Who never had a power with? Him did a war with. As a young youth, him already had his name. He already had his gun. People used to come link him to go fight them war. All of the gangs and did I say, yo, come link with me, come link with me. People wanted bad from services. But tragedy struck. The logic that 87s use that if you are a man a problem and if you can't catch Quarko, you catch him shot. That logic end up catch up with Bad Fram. Bad Fram's mother was murdered down at Maxfield. This moment had a profound impact on the already violent Kidan Johnson. Now, before I go into this part, let me just add this disclaimer because I know what Jamaican culture is like. I know a lot of people can't wait for find a reason to feel sorry and pour out their heart and get them tissue and wipe them eyes for poor little bad from. The idea that it was the killing of his mother that made bad from into a vicious 87 simply isn't true. So don't even bother try and start a narrative. Bad from was already a killer. Bad Fram was already highly feared in South St. Andrew. However, the killing of his mother made something switch in Bad Fram's mind. He became a woman killer. Now, this completely blew my mind. As I was doing research on him, as I was speaking to people about Bad Fram, from both the Maxfield side and the Spanish Town side, the same thing kept coming over and over again, Bad Fram enjoyed killing women. And at first, this puzzled me. It puzzled me because the idea that somebody would kill his mother, and let's say he would go back and kill that person's mother, that would be in 87 world normal. That would be logical by 87 standards. That wouldn't surprise me. But the idea that he then started to relish killing women threw me off completely. How does somebody who suffer the loss of a mother then start to go around relishing killing women? Any excuse you can come up with bad for me take it to go kill a woman. I didn't understand. I started to study American serial killers. That's where I had to go to try and get to what exactly was going on inside Bad Fram's mind. Obviously, I'm no therapist and he's never laid down on any coach and tell me what's going on in his mind. This is just my opinion from studying and researching people like Bad Fram. So, what did I find looking at the American serial killers? Now, as you can see on your screen, information from the Serial Killer Information Center. Yes, that is an actual thing. Only a country like the United States would actually have so many serial killers that there's actually a place called the Serial Killer Information Center. Extraordinary. And the rate Jamaica is going, we probably need to start one as well. But anyway, they found out that serial killers who had very high IQ were actually the exception and not the rule. This simply wasn't normal. The majority of serial killers are basically LIQs. But there were some exceptions, and these exceptions, Hollywood made movies about them. Right, for example, Edmund Kemper, right, people like Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, right. These people have movies that are made about them. You've all seen Hannibal Lecter, and then people shape the idea that serial killers are these brilliant geniuses. Those people are the exceptions. But then I thought to myself, okay, what about EQ? Because it's EQ that would teach you how to deal with certain tragedies that happen to you especially in Bad Fram's case where he lost his mother. So then I thought to myself, let me look at criminals and EQ, not IQ. And the studies was fascinating. Check this out. There was a study done in America, again, where else, right? That it's called the relation between emotional intelligence and criminal behavior. They found something fascinating. See, they took 202 people. Uh, 101 of them were convicted criminals and 101 of them weren't. And they measured them, they looked at their emotional intelligence. The results are on your screen right now. And I'll read it. Quote, the group of convicted offenders 
obtained significantly lower scores on all the domains of ME2, that's the test, such as interpersonal awareness, their own emotions, interpersonal awareness, other people's emotions, interpersonal management, own emotions, and interpersonal management, other emotions, and aggregate emotional quotient in comparison to their normal counterparts. Sounds fancy, but basically come down to the convicted criminals had much lower EQ than the people who were not. This is fascinating. I then started to look at how this relate to serial killers and I found out that serial killers tend to have very low EQ, emotional intelligence. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how this relates to bad friend. See, the reason why it completely threw me off that somebody who lose their mother would then start to become a prolific woman killer comes down to emotional intelligence. See, for some people, right, those with uh, high EQ, when they suffer certain tragedies, they think to themselves, I'm going to not only overcome this, but I'm going to make sure other people don't have to deal with this. For example, some people, if somebody in their family touched them up when they were a child, they dedicate their entire life to protecting children. That is high EQ. Because they say, I know what it is like to suffer this. I know what it is like to have this happen to me. And I don't want anybody else to go through it. No, somebody who has lower EQ. This is how they look at the same situation. They say, well, you know what? Since me get feel up, me go feel up people too. They want other people to feel their pain. They want other people to go through the same thing they have been through. EQ, emotional intelligence. See, after studying and looking at these serial killers, looking at see, uh, various cases, thinking to myself, okay, let's see who are the people in history who are known to be woman killers and let me explore what their EQ was like because as you know, America studies serial killers. I came across two names. Again, people, I'm going to get back to how this relates to bad from. Go and enjoy your mint tea, your Milo, your Cersei, whatever it is. Some people probably have put on them rice and peas right now. The first serial killer I'm going to look at from the United States, of course, where else, is a man by the name of Gary Ridgway. Right. Now, this brother is on your screen. Yeah, he's, he's as mad as him look as the second highest amount of victims in American history when it comes down to being a serial killer. But his childhood story, how he became a woman killer because he was fascinated with killing women. Right, again, I was trying to find people who had a similar story to bad from. The reason, right, or the psychologists who look at him, studied him, talked to him, the conclusion they came to as to how he ended up like that. You have to see it for yourself. Because if you don't see it, you might think this has some kind of show. Listen up and look at your screen right now, please. Now, this sicko was known as the Green River Killer. He confessed to killing at least 90 women and underage females during the years of 1982 to 2001. Let me say that again. 90 and he carried on from 82 to 2001. He was a deviant, right? But listen to what him find out, right? Listen to the relationship he had with his mother. Gary was socially awkward and had a difficult time learning in school. He was bullied at school because of this. So in other words, he was slow. People picked on him because he was slow. And when he was home, his parents fought over his low grades. So his parents said, of course, set him down. And he was hearing this. Listen up now. His mother was controlling and provocative around him. She constantly belittled and spoke down to him, calling him names such as stupid and retarded. Gary's father was a working man and wasn't home very much. Thus, his mother had full control over their home. Gary started developing a deep-seated anger towards his mother 
Mayor Rita and started to act out his aggression towards smaller, more defenseless things. Gary even remembers locking a cat in a cooler until it died a slow death. Do you see the same patterns coming back again from serial killers? Animals burying dogs, right, doing this to animals, doing this to cats. This is where them start out. This aggression, right, started out with killing and torture of small animals such as cats and then kept growing and evolving with age. As an older child, Gary stabbed a younger boy. The act did not end in death. That was the beginning of Gary's unhealthy coping skill to deal with his anger. Here's the mind-blowing part. As an adolescent, Gary started to notice the only woman in his life in a different way than he had as a child. That's the mother, they're talking about his mother right here, so. There were no other women that Gary had seen nude. Thus Gary began to watch his mother sunbathe and had an unhealthy sexual urges towards her. Gary Ridgway, right, when you read about him and you can go do your own research, right, not only did he go from hating his mother, but then to being attracted to his mother. So then when he realized nothing can happen between him and his mother, he hated her even more. The end result? He targeted and killed only women, and 90 of them that he confessed to. Let's look at another and, um, serial killer, and this person is the only person in American history who is a bigger serial killer than Gary Ridgway. That man was Samuel Little, who confessed to killing as many as 93 women, and that's how many him claim him can remember because by the time him catch him he was much older and him saying can't even remember some of them. Now what was his story? Again, woman killer. The, the biggest serial killers in America tend to be women killers. They have issues with women and it's usually tied to guess who? Their mother. What was his story? Well, look at your screen right now. Samuel Little was born to his mother when she was only a teenager. She was a prostitute and she actually gave birth to him while she was in jail. Samuel Little told a journalist that his mother abandoned him on the side of a dirt road after she gave birth to him as a teen. She come out of jail now, she's having the baby, right? And then after she had the baby, she left him on the side of the road. Samuel Little grew up hating his mother, despising his mother and again you know the end result. He targeted women across 19 states over a period of 25 years. So this is a conventional woman killer. They have a problem with their mother, right? They resented their mother and they took it out on women. So now I'm asking everyone who knew bad from and when I talk to them, I'm like tell me about the relationship he had with his mother. Did he resent his mother? Did he hate his mother? Maybe that explained why he was such a woman killer and he didn't even care the fact that his mother died. Everybody said no. He had a very good relationship with his mother. You could go as far as to call him a mama's boy. He adored his mother. So how a young man, a young youth who adore his mother, love his mother, lose his mother to violence and then go on to kill a bag of woman? I looked, I studied, I researched, and this is the conclusion I've come to. Apart from having low emotional intelligence, not knowing how to properly cope with a scenario like that, when the complete opposite of what you would expect of somebody who has seen first-hand violence against women. In my opinion, Bad Fram wanted other people to feel what he felt. Bad Fram started to relish, to go out of his way to kill women because he wanted other people to suffer, to be motherless the way he was motherless and suffered. Some people, when something happened to them that is bad, you know how them say misery, love company? They then start to find ways to make other people share into it. Oh, I don't have a mommy anymore. You're not going to have a mommy anymore. 
What are the infamous cases, apart from the parting? Well, like Hodges, like j Bod, like Sci-Fi, like Scott Thomas, there's simply too many to count. So instead, I'd give you the cases that are more infamous. One of them that stand out above all others, in my mind, is what happened in Tredega Park. You may remember, right, when Klansman go over there, wreaked havoc on the community, left eight people dead. In the video I did about Tredega Park, you may remember I mentioned that the man them go in our house, and inside the house were nothing but women and children. You may remember I said, bad from Hajis, brothers, them going at the house. When they went inside, Bad Fram did something that was so brutal, so vicious, as I said, even Hodges, who looked up to Bad Fram and admired him as a killer, was completely stunned. Hodges would later on, to his closest peers, admit that the Tradiga Park operation was something he was completely unprepared for. He would cry when he talked about Tredega Park. Now again, think about that. Imagine what somebody like Nevada Hodges have to see to break down and cry when they are talking about a killing operation. It was Bad Fram's action in that house that make even Hodges couldn't stomach it. So what happened? Well, after entering the house, the team that went in there, right, Bad Fram, Badas, Hodges, right, couple of the 87s, but those men were the Cena men, so of course they know them a lead. Upon entering the house on that fateful Friday the 13th, the man them realized that there was no 87s in the house. There wasn't even a big man in the house. Just a woman and pure picnic. So, of course, they would think, well, the Magodos turn around and leave. No, not this group. Not a group that include somebody like Bad Fram. It's almost as if a Christmas when he realized he wouldn't come across. Bad Fram started to engage the woman and the pity them. Who lost their lives? Well, the name of the lady was Erang Hoopleen Dennis, as well as three of the children, 11 year old Angel Anderson. 23-year-old Monique Anderson and 15-year-old Joel Anderson. So the father lost not just his woman but three of his children one time. When the shooting started, the women did something that was extraordinary. They literally threw themselves in the line of fire to protect their children. Erang Dennis, right, who as I said she was the mother of the three who lost their lives, but our daughter, 23 year old Molly Gunderson, she had her own children and she had her daughter and fear her breasts when the man named come in there. See, what completely stunned the other clansman name is because there was a 15 year old boy, right, Joel Anderson. Now, of course, everybody almost expected to say at him, them they go shoot him. Bad Fram's action was so vicious catch everybody else off guard because he then started to target the woman them in the house the man them right the rest of clans man them they are attacking Joel Anderson but bad fam had a special focus on the females in the house Aaron Dennis tried to put herself to cover her children them did not help shoot her up then him 16 walked up to the 11 year old little girl, right, Angel Anderson, put weapon to her head, take her life. Monique Anderson, 23 year old, mother of her own children, then. she also tried to throw off her body in the line of fire, man, shoot her as well. This is what had enough people completely mind blown. It didn't make sense. Joel Anderson was the I guess you could say the textbook hit, textbook person they would have gone for. They might go in our community and look for man, they want to shoot people, then find a 15 year old boy, 
even though his life is just as important as anybody else's, you almost expect, according to gunman logic, that they would target a 15 year old boy. It was the actions of Badfa against the woman right, that, as I said, make even people like Hodges suffered relentlessly. Of course, nothing less than he deserves, right, because he was there. It's not like he was an innocent bystander walking on the road and was witnessing or a guan. So, Tredigo Park, in my opinion, is one of the best examples of just so ruthless bad fam was the females and how much he enjoyed killing them. There was also an infamous case about two women, mother and daughter, who were falsely accused of selling out an 87. Bad fam was the one who led the team to go for those two women. Bad fam shoot the woman them until them face cave in. Don't worry, you're going to hear about that video further on down the road. There are also many instances where people would tell bad fam say a certain woman does them see her a smile with one police, them see her pan her phone in one corner for no reason whatsoever. Bad fam will just come to the conclusion say these women are work with police and they must go kill them. He also ended up finding out the people who killed his own mother and he would slowly but surely finish them off one by one. There was a famous incident of bad fam getting a call, he was in Spanish town, he was chilling and him get a call say somebody who he was looking for who was responsible, one of the person who played a role in his mother dying. He got a call that them finally catch the person, the person they on a bus. Bad fam left what he was doing immediately and went to catch up with the person and kill the person on the very bus. People understand this. The reason why Bad Fram could operate more like a serial killer and not a 87 is because technically Bad Fram was not a part of a clansman. Let me explain. You have to t think of Bad Fram as a contractor who was contracted to the clansman gang. Whenever there was any issue, Amongst the 87s and people who go complain to Tesha, right? For example, you would say, Yo, boss, that money, this me, that money, this me. And Tesha would say, All right, do this to him, broke her hand, broke her foot, beat him, whatever. That did not apply to Bad Fram. People realized that no matter what Bad Fram do, Tesha never punished Bad Fram. So people used to ask, Why Bad Fram gets special treatment? And Tesha would tell them, Bad Fram is technically not a part of the system. Him and Tesha had an understanding. Bad Fram went to Klansman and he brought his own soldiers and he bring him own gun them. Right? He was almost subcontracted to clans. So enough killing the one. If Tesha wants certain things to deal with her, Klansman wants certain things to deal with, they would send Bad Fram to deal with it. But he had his own weapons and check this out. Bad Fram was allowed to collect his own extortion. That was something that was unheard of for even the most senior man them in a clans. He could collect his own extortion, take the money and now he give it to the system. And he would take this money and buy his own weapons for fame own team at the sevens, who were mostly other Maxfield youth, right? Because he used to go and recruit youth at Maxfield and bring them to, as I said, subcontract to be a part of the clansman system. This made him one of the richest year sevens. Right, because of course if you are collect your own extortion you have a party you have a party down to done, right? You just take the money and do it and feel it. Of course he had a bag of money. Right. But you know people claim say, Oh, all you send you the money. But the more money bad from make, all him do was buy more guns. One of his prized possessions was a chrome taros with a rubber grip. He also had multiple rifles, right? The M sixteen M carry got go park, it was his. Right, he never have to take it from the system and carry back with the system. Right, people know Bad Fram had some serious guns in his arsenal. So, you might be wondering, okay, what happened to Bad Fram? Seeing that the kind of things the men do, right, being one of the most cruel youths, if you not only come out of Max Hill, but out of Klansman, being a prolific woman killer, how did Bad Fram go out? Now, according to what I like to call basic street version, People tell us a bad from and man follow up over gun and also him lose him life. That's not true. That is one of the false motives the clansmen are famous for. Let me explain. See, clansman is known for the false motive. For example, the biggest one of them all is he's an informer. 
when them want to kill somebody, what them they really want to tell people the real motive, the first thing them throw up on you is you're in pharma or in thief gun or something like that. But from the basic street version is oh, in my man a gun problem, never want to bring back gun. That's not the case. Higher level people inside a trans man will tell you that Bad Fram died from a program that was set on him by Andre Blackman Bryan because Bad Fram was one of Tesha's most loyal soldiers and one of his most feared. Blackman simply cannot operate as no kind of done as long as Bad Fram was alive. So Blackman in collusion with some youths from Central Village, right? Black man run the program. He met them know the kind of guns they might have, right? And if them kill him, what them they get from him? And things were falling into place to get rid of the feared Kidan Johnson. Because by now, bad from over Central Village are cool out. Police are look for him, right? Him name called upon him much murders. Money on his head, because the police wanted people to give up information about him. The Central Village was the perfect place to hide out. Now, you might have heard the video I did called um, The Land of the Shallow Graves. In it, I mention that Central Village have some holes, have some natural features. Anytime the man named Dash Bill over there, so, they are never ever found again. So, now bad from, right, chilling out in Central Village with a youth named Dane. Dane is the son of Dave Clans. Dean and Bad Fram are cool out over Central Village. Black man, as I said, run the program upon him. The people who go for Bad Fram, they might be wondering then what kind of people would I go for somebody like Bad Fram. Let me explain something to you. Over Central Village, you have some men who look like aliens. I am not exaggerating. You see the way how pricky boy look? You have some man over Central Village will live in the bush permanently and check this out, some of them are even sprats. Some of them are gangster killer sprats. Central Village can tell you about them, they man they don't left the bush. So that is why some people describe them as alien looking men because their features are so rough they don't look like anybody you would ever see walking on the road. Look at the Pricky Boy video. In his final days, when he, did, when he did that transformation from a normal young youth into somebody that looks almost beast-like, that is how these type of people of a central village look. And when them take with people, nobody no find them again. Bad from and Dean, they pan a spot asleep. The man them wait till them drop asleep and go in pan them. They didn't shoot them. They used knives. The man them stab up bad from just to cramp him so he can't move and then take them away, carry them go off to them spot and dissect them up and fling them away. The young youth Dean, he wasn't even an original target, but just by the fact that he was hanging around it bad from, the man in decided they might get rid of him as well. So even though bad from never went to prison for any of his crimes, all the brutal acts him carry out. He never went before no court. No jury never say who we'll find him guilty. He never got on the horizon on a jeep he got in the 30, 40 years. But he went out in such a brutal manner where not even a fingernail of bad fam has ever been recovered. He went out the same way he lived. Brutal, vicious, barbaric. Central village man name Ensure so nobody in a bad from family will ever get a chance to mourn his funeral. People, I want you to understand something. You see them place over Central Village? It's not one or two or three people over there. When they send me the video when they hear people talk about missing persons, ask Central Village people them what the place they might tell you about. They might be wondering, okay, why the police not gonna dig it up? You have to see it to believe it. It's nowhere where you can drive go. It's no place where you can just go walk or look. Even if police try running over there, them probably dropping at some of them old and broke them foot and dead before them even reach nowhere. Right? We're talking about extremely difficult terrain. And the man them who know it, the eighty seven them, right? The alien looking man who might tell about all them have to do 
is just ambush the police them and then can't go no further. You would need a full scale military invasion if you have any kind of findings over there. So. And then even after you do that, even after you take multiple losses, you still have to go find the exact hole them because it's not like say they must dig hole. Like there are places they must dig hole, you know, like over River side, right? Rio Kobe them dig hole and bury people. Central village have some natural features, have some all over the right where the rain and anything they cut out gone way down in the earth. I don't even think Jamaica have the equipment to go all the way down and find what don't have the bottom of them thing. But from is somewhere, at least his remains, is somewhere at the bottom of that. Go ahead, Google the words Kid and Johnson, Bad Fram Hill, you won't find it. Bad Fram has been completely erased from the record books. And as for the guns them when did a lock, when him over Central Village, the man them take them there, keep them for themselves. People, I want you to understand something. Bad Fram, being an Apex 87, you would think this youth would go out in some kind of extraordinary shootout. Instead, in the pan ends, drop asleep, so peaceful, resting so quiet like say him a law abiding citizen, to the point a man can come in there, stab him, not shoot him, you know, come in there and stab them up, chop them up, without him even realize until it's too late. It's always blown my mind how wanted man can lie down and sleep like say they are just some regular person going about their business. You would think two of them, because of him and Dane over there, you would think at least one of them are saying, you know what, you watch this and me watch that. No. Two of them lie down, drop asleep, a draw a snore, and the man them go in upon them and dash them. But from went out very, very soft, considering the type of life he lived. But that's how it goes. This is how it had to end. Somebody who lived like that simply wasn't going to get old and pass away from natural causes. He lived a brutal life, he went out in a brutal manner. People are skid on Johnson, but from the woman killer. As I said, I'm not a therapist, but from has never laid down on a couch and tell me what's going through his mind. These are just my opinion as to how he became so vicious towards women. Now before I end the video, let me just say this to the PIA. People were now at 600 videos. 600 videos. If you go back to my channel page and you filter for the oldest video, you will see that video came out on May the 3rd, 2019. It's now 600 videos. Do the maths. See whenever people link me and to serve people love this, me love when they talk about this, me love when they type of video, me like when they make me laugh, me like when they do certain topics. One thing people never really address is the consistency and work ethic that goes into keeping this channel running. Because at this stage, and a lot of people look at the numbers and they think, well, SRP make it look easy. It really isn't. It really isn't. But when you're driven by passion, when you strongly believe in something, even when you might think, you know what, let me just leave out this, or let me just stop, or let me just take a break. I've already done this, I've already done that, I've already achieved this. Look how many videos may have hit these targets, hit these numbers. But when you're driven by passion, you have to just keep going until you physically or mentally can't and at the moment i am not at either stage so people just keep looking out for more content keep listening out for us addressing some of the issues facing jamaicans yard and abroad patreon squad big up on yourself pia you don't know more life bless